What is up my wildlife homies? I'm Adam Ernst and today we're going to be talking about what I think is the best budget and lightweight camera setup for beginner wildlife photographers. So let's go! Alright guys, so this is the camera I have been rocking for the past couple of months. This is the Lumix G7. Uh, I have a dead cat on here right now. It's just a Rode Video Micro. But yeah, so this is the Lumix G7. You see the Lumix right there. And this is the 100 to 300 millimeter lens Mark II version. So just a little bit overall of this camera. Um, so it's a micro four thirds system. It's a mirrorless camera. So you know, this is a really great camera setup, especially for, for beginners. So it's a very, very small, lightweight camera. You know, you can move it around pretty easily. We also have a flip out screen here, which is awesome if you put it on a tripod or you know, you're trying to get a low angle shot. Panasonic is known for the customization, so there's a whole bunch of buttons on here, function buttons, and you know, you can assign it different things and to have preset for different exposure settings, you know, different aspect ratios, different different qualities or whatever you want. Um, so another great thing about Lumix is that they have 4K video quality, which is great. It looks really, really good. And, you know, most cameras out there do not offer, you know, 4K. Um, it's kind of a newer, it's not a, it's not a newer thing, it's been out for a while, but you know, Canon and you know Sony, you know, are just now starting to get that up. Where Panasonic has had 4K in their cameras for for forever. You know, this is like a four or five year old camera, but it's still great. Obviously, we have a mic input. There's sadly no uh, headphone input, but for wildlife photography, you probably don't need that. And then we have this really awesome um, electric viewfinder. I think it's like 2.3 million dots or something like that, um, and it's really high quality. This, this is a really good wildlife photography lens. I've used it for five months now, and I'm really loving it. It also has um, Power OIS, which is compatible with Panasonic's dual IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization. Sally, this camera does not have it, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, so this, this lens does have uh, optic image stabilization. So yeah, that's just a little overview of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, but for the main things, I wanna talk about the pros and cons of this camera. So for the pros, we're gonna talk about image quality. Uh, has really good image quality. We're going to talk about the Micro Four Thirds system and how it can help you with uh, wildlife photography. Some of the advantages that you know you get with this system that you don't get with other systems. And then we're going to talk about price and portability. So for the cons, we're going to talk about some of the disadvantages of the Micro Four Thirds system. You know, some people don't like it. Um, we are going to talk about image stabilization, and we are going to talk about autofocus. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys. So first off, let's talk about the Micro Four Thirds system and how it can actually help you for wildlife photography. The so Micro Four Thirds systems have a two times crop factor from a full frame equivalent. So this lens, for example, on the Micro Four Thirds system is 100 to 300 millimeters, right? But if we take the same equivalent and put it on a full frame camera, you're actually getting a 200 to 600 um, focal length, which is insane on this tiny little setup. Like it, this is just crazy small. So that's one of the advantages of the Micro Four Thirds system. You know, you get that extra range and such a small body. Again, small body is the other thing. Since the sensor is pretty small, their bodies are actually really small. A focal, a focal length of this equivalent on a full, on a full frame system is like massive, and it's going to cost you like 10 G's. You know, it's just going to be insane. But you can just, you can just see how tiny this setup is, and I'm able to get really stunning pictures with this thing. It does have a 16 megapixel camera, which you know is you know not bad, but you can't really compare it to something like a 5D Mark IV, which is like a 30 megapixel camera. You know the images won't be exactly the same, but you still get really great quality pictures off of this thing. Just like this picture right here. Right, pretty good, pretty awesome. Um, so that was a cool humpback whale I shot uh, a few weeks ago. Um, who was breaching out of the water and peck slapping and everything. If there hasn't been a video out on that guy, I'm sure there will be in the next couple days. As you can see from that picture, you know, the image quality is pretty good. Um, for a 16 megapixel camera, for a $500 camera, you know, it's really good image quality. And you know, not to mention the 4K that this thing gives is really, really good. And not a lot of cameras offer that right now, um, 4K image quality. And it's just sharp as all get out, you know, from a very cheap camera. So, you know, you have a really long telephoto lens and a really small body. We have a great image quality for this camera. You know, the price and portability, um, this is a $500 camera. $500. What? Most wildlife photographers, you know, professional grade wildlife photography, you know, again, keep in mind this is for the beginner. The most professional bodies are three grand, 
two and a half grand, something like that. Most lenses can be from five to 10 grand. On um, this lens, I found it on uh, eBay, pretty much brand new for 450 bucks. For the price, you know, less than a thousand dollars you're gonna pay for this thing, you know, you, you cannot beat this. This is a great setup for wildlife photography. You know, you got the focal range, you got the small size, you know, portability, and you know, like I said, back to portability, um, it's so maneuverable. So, you know, a lot of the time, you know, if you have a massive setup, you know, you're kind of confined into what you can do. But if you have a really small setup like this, you know, you can aim it all around, you know, you get up and down, which is a really important thing for wildlife photography. You know, you want to be on the move to get your shot. You know, another thing is, you know, going back to the price on this thing, you know, a thousand dollars. So if you were to pay a thousand dollars for this setup versus like 10, 10 grand for like a Canon setup, you know, think about what you can do with that extra money. You know, you can invest that money in going on trips to see these animals in the wild, or you can spend your money and time on actually, on actually learning how to shoot wildlife. That's the thing that a lot of people don't know how to do. Um, you know, sometimes I'll see, I'll see people with a Canon 1DX Mark II with a 500 millimeter Canon, you know, F4, F2.8, more than a 10 grand setup, and you know, they still get, you know, average, average pictures, you know, nothing special. I would argue it's m way more beneficial to spend your money on, you know, a small camera like this at first, um, learn how to shoot wildlife. This is all, this is all you really need is, you know, photographing animals in your backyard, you know, the birds, the deer, the raccoons, you know, whatever you may have in your local area. Yeah, you know, that's another thing, like you want to, you know, learn how to get your exposure right when you're shooting wildlife and, you know, make sure your shutter speed is right. If you're shooting a bird in the air, you know, you want to be a, a, above a one one thousandth of a second for uh, shutter speed. But, you know, just getting your animal in shot, moving around to, to get, you know, a, a beautiful background as well. These are all just things you want to learn before you spend like 10 grand on a setup, you know, it's just not, it's not worth it. And, you know, if you don't like it, then, you know, you didn't spend 10 grand on a setup. I would argue it's way more beneficial to buy a cheaper camera and to learn first. All right, so I think we talked about most of the pros in this thing. You know, I, I honestly love this camera um, for a plethora of reasons that I've gone over so far. But let's talk about, you know, there's two sides to every story, so let's talk about some of the cons this thing has. So first, the Micro Four Thirds system. Some would argue that the image quality, you know, since you have a smaller sensor, some would argue that the image quality is just garbage, which I personally don't think is garbage. As you can see from the photos at the end of this video, I'm getting some really crisp pictures. Now, this is a 16 megapixel camera. They actually do have a better camera than this. This is still pretty cheap for the world of photography. Um, it's the Lumix G9. The Lumix G9 is the camera I'm investing in next. Um, that'll run you about $1,200, $1,300 right now, which is still, versus a three grand, four grand uh, body from Canon or Sony or something, is a lot better. Um, but the Lumix G9 has uh, in-body image stabilization. Even, even the sensor on the Lumix G9 is only at 20.3 megapixels. Um, again, doesn't compare to something like a 30 megapixel camera, you get a lot more detail. But you know, for what you're paying for, for the price you're getting this thing at, um, it has really good image quality. You know, some would argue that the Micro Four Third system also does not do very well in low light, um, but for wildlife, photograph for wildlife photography, you mostly do not need a low light camera. Most of the stuff you're going to be shooting is in the middle of the day. And you know, they do have great lenses that are pretty pricey. Um, that do have a little lower aperture. There's a 200 millimeter f 2.8 they just came out with, which is you know, that's that's goals. That lens is goals. That's the lens you want to buy if you're uh, if you're rocking the professional sort of setup for the Lumix system. But you know, it's further down the road. So yeah, you know, Micro Four Third system. You know, I would argue there's a lot more advantages than there are disadvantages. Um, next, we're gonna talk about image stabilization. Sadly, this body does not have image stabilization. However, this lens does. So Panasonic just has insane stabilization. I think you get like five stops um, for stabilization. Um, but you know that really helps. You know, so you don't have to buy this fluid tripod that keeps your shut, that keeps your camera uh, smooth. You know, if you, you can literally just handhold this stuff. Um, obviously, like I said, not with this camera, but with a, a plethora of other cameras that Panasonic offers. You know, for a very cheap price, pretty smooth. And even with this thing, um, I can get pretty pretty clear shots, um, pretty steady shots. But like I said, you know, knowing body stabilization on this might make your life a little bit more difficult. You just gotta be careful with it. So yeah, we talked about the disadvantages. We talked about the Micro Four Thirds system and the no in-body image stabilization. The last, the last thing I wanna talk about is autofocus. So Panasonic is known for their below average autofocus, which is a problem for wildlife photography. Probably like one in 10 shots. Um, you know, if I get a whale breaching up out of the water, or I have a bird flying by and I'll get it in my camera, everything's good. And you know, it just, you know, the autofocus, the autofocus will find, you know, it'll go in and out of focus to find the bird or whatever. And you know, sometimes I'll miss my shot. 
rarely does that ever happen, but it does happen, and it is a problem. Um, so with the Lumix G7, it is kind of a problem. Again, going back to that Lumix G9 I was talking, the autofocus on that is supposed to be 10 times better. Um, but yeah, just, just so you know, if you do want to get this set up, autofocus can be a problem sometimes. But you know, like I said, 9 times out of 10, you're going to get your shot if you know what you're doing. I think I pretty much covered all the pros and the cons of this camera setup. Um, you know, like I said, this is geared towards a beginner wildlife photographer. You're passionate about wildlife, you want to take photographs of them and share them on your social medias or whatever, you're just starting to get into it, I highly, highly recommend this setup. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below, and I'll definitely answer them for you. Yeah, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.